screencast for exchange rates and foreign exchange markets. This is about currencies and how people trade currencies and why currencies are worth what they're worth. If you've ever traveled to another country and have had to trade dollars to get other countries' currencies, you've experienced this on a small scale. We're going to look at it on a macro scale and we're going to look at the things that determine currency exchange values. We're going to also look at how that affects the economy. All right, so some definitions. A foreign exchange market or a currency exchange market is a market in which various national currencies are exchanged for one another. Again, if you've ever had to trade your currency, you've gone probably in an airport or a currency exchange booth to trade dollars for euros or Canadian dollars or what have you. That's a little foreign exchange market. Now, in rooms around the world and on the internet, people trade vast amounts of currencies for all sorts of different reasons, and we're going to explore some of those reasons. An exchange rate, then, is the equilibrium price of currencies in various foreign exchange markets. What's a dollar worth in terms of yen? What's a yen worth in terms of euros? So, for example, if you go to one of those foreign exchange booths and you see that for one dollar you can get 100 yen, that's an exchange rate how many dollars a yen is equal to, how many yen a dollar is equal to. Now, when one currency becomes more valuable compared to another currency, we call that appreciation. So for example, just very simple numbers. If in 1990, a dollar was equal to one yen, and then a year later, a dollar was equal to two yen, we would say that the dollar has appreciated. It's gone up in value against the yen. Alternatively, we could say that the yen has depreciated. It's gone down in value compared to the dollar. It takes two of them to get a dollar in the second year. It only takes one of them to get a dollar in the first year. That's what depreciation is. That occurs when one currency becomes less valuable compared to another currency. So again, simple example, if in 1990 a dollar was equal to one yen, and then a year later you trade over a dollar and you only get half a yen, we'd say that the dollar has depreciated compared to the yen, and alternatively, we'd say that the yen has appreciated compared to the dollar. Okay, so with that behind us, let's talk about why that matters. Exchange rates affect net exports. They affect the cost, the price, of imports and exports. And net exports, we've already seen, are a part of aggregate demand. They're one of the four components that go into aggregate demand. What we're going to see and what we have seen before is that appreciation causes net exports to fall. And when net exports fall, aggregate demand falls, and that has an effect on our economy, price levels, GDP, and employment. Depreciation causes net exports to rise. We've seen this before in other screencasts, so let me give you the example I gave you back then to show you why. Let's say that, again, there's a TV in the United States that sells for $200, and let's say that there's the exact same television in Japan that sells for 300 yen. There's the two televisions. Now let's assume that the exchange rate is a dollar is equal to one yen. If that's the case, we can do a little math, and we can see that the television is going to be cheaper in the United States. We're going to want to buy it in the United States. Japanese people are going to want to buy this television in the United States. It's just simply cheaper. Now let's say a year goes by and the exchange rate changes. Maybe a dollar is now equal to two yen. The televisions haven't changed and the price tags on them haven't changed, but their relative costs have. Using this new exchange rate, that Japanese television effectively costs $150. The US television still is costing $200. So now everyone's going to want to buy this television in Japan. Our exports are going to drop. Our imports are going to go up because we're now going to buy it in Japan. Japanese people aren't buying it from us anymore. So in this example, net exports would fall because the dollar is appreciated. Appreciation tends to hurt domestic producers, makes our stuff more expensive. On the other hand, domestic consumers like it because foreign goods become cheaper. All right, so the first thing to memorize. Appreciation of a currency causes net exports to fall. Depreciation causes net exports to rise. Depreciation would simply work in reverse. All right, so that's why currency exchange matters in terms of aggregate demand, aggregate supply, and our entire economy. Let's talk about the things that affect exchange rates, and this is the real important part of the screencast and what you're likely to see most of on the AP exam. First off, a change in tastes and preferences. 
Let's say, for example, that Germany all of a sudden produces some awesome new product that everyone in the world is going to want, including Americans. Well, Germans don't want dollars. Germ Germans want their currency, euros. So if we want to buy this stuff, we're going to need to convert our dollars into euros. Let's think about what that's going to do to currency values. Now, the way I picture this and the way it might help you to picture this is to think about foreign exchange markets as being a room where currencies are being traded. Think about who's walking into that room, who's trying to trade their currency, and why they're there, what currency they're trying to pick up. So to just draw this out for you to kind of uh, picture it the way I picture it, again, imagine a foreign exchange market as a room where people are trading currencies, all sorts of currencies. They're trading dollars, they're trading yen, they're trading British pounds, they're trading euros, they're trading every currency. If Americans all of a sudden want to start buying German goods, and if German companies only really take euros, then in this example, the person walking into that foreign exchange market is going to be an American, U.S. What he has in his hands, or her hands, are dollars. That's what we have. So the person walking into the foreign exchange market is bringing their currency into that foreign exchange market. That is going to affect the supply of that currency in that room. In this room, there are going to be more dollars than there were before. Why is this person in the room? They're trying to get their hands on euros to buy those German goods. They want these euros. So the reason that they're there is going to affect the demand for that currency. The currency they're bringing in, the supply is going to change. The currency that they want, the demand is going to change. So in the graphs that you see, and you'll always see two graphs in these currency exchange situations, the graph on the left is the market for dollars, the supply and demand for dollars. And when this person walks into their, this room bringing all their dollars to trade, that supply of dollars is shifting to the right. Now notice what happens when you increase the supply of something. The price or the value of it goes down. The dollar price in terms of euros is going to decline. They're increasing the supply of those dollars. In the graph on the right, that's about euros, the supply and demand for, of euros in that room. And the reason this person is in the room is to get their hands on euros so they, they can buy these awesome new German goods. That increases the demand for euros in that market. And notice what happens to the price or the value of a euro. It goes up. All right, so try to picture these rooms again as we work through these next couple of examples of what trade uh, changes exchange rates. In this example, as I just laid out for you, the supply of dollars is going to increase, which is going to cause the value of the dollar to fall, depreciation. The demand for euros is going to increase, which is going to cause um, the value of the euro to appreciate. All right, good enough. Second factor exchange, uh, affecting exchange rates, changes in income or wealth. If Americans become wealthier, imagine Amer every American winning the lottery, for example, we're going to want to buy more stuff, more of pretty much everything, including more foreign goods. Well, again, if we want those foreign goods, let's say German goods, we're going to have to trade our dollars in, uh, for euros in order to get them. So again, the person walking into that room would be an American. They're bringing dollars into that market, increasing the supply of dollars. They're there to get euros to buy German goods, increasing the demand for euros. And we're going to see the same thing in this example. Supply of dollars shifting to the right, causing the dollar to depreciate. Demand for euros shifting to the right, causing the price or the value of the euro to appreciate. Third factor, interest rates. If German financial investments like savings accounts, bonds, etc. offer higher interest rates than American financial investments, we're going to want to invest in those German investments. Now you have to be careful here. Here we're talking about quote unquote good interest rates, interest rates that will earn our, on our investments. So for example, if there's a bank in Germany that's offering 10% for savings accounts, and American banks are only offering 1% for savings accounts, we're going to want to put our money in German banks. But again, German banks don't want dollars, they want euros. So we're going to see the same kind of dynamic. Americans are going to walk into that foreign exchange market with all their dollars to trade them for euros to put into um, uh, German banks or buy German investments. The supply of dollars increases, depreciating the value of the dollar. 
the demand for euros increases, appreciating the value of the euro. Fourth factor, relative price level changes. Let's say that prices in the United States are higher relative to prices in Germany. Let's say you could buy the same goods in Germany for cheaper than you can buy them in America. Again, what's going to happen? We're going to want to buy stuff from Germany as opposed to the United States, and we're going to see the same exact dynamic. In order to buy those German goods, we're going to walk into the foreign exchange market to trade our dollars for euros. The reason we're in those markets is to get euros. We're going to see the value of the dollar fall. We're going to see the value of the euro rise. The last factor affecting exchange rates is speculation. Now, there are currency traders who trade currencies just like people trade stocks, bonds, and everything else. Currency traders make bets about what's going to happen to exchange rates. If U.S. speculators, for example, believe that the euro is going to rise in value in the future, they can make money by buying it cheaply now, waiting for it to rise in value, and then selling it, just like they can with stocks. So again, in order to, um, to do that, they're going to try to trade their dollars for euros. They're going to walk into those foreign exchange markets, hand over their dollars, increasing the supply of dollars. The reason they're there is to get these euros that they think are going to increase in value in the future. And notice, just the act of speculation might make it happen. It might be a self-fulfilling prophecy. If enough people do this, in fact, the euro will rise in value, and these people will make money. Now, those are the factors affecting exchange rates, and that's the most important part of this screencast. But you should know about a couple of different exchange rate systems. There's what's known as the fixed exchange rate system. And in that system, um, governments determine what they want the exchange rate to be. For example, maybe a dollar is equal to one euro, and they want to maintain that exchange rate. Now, the advantage to that is stability. The relative prices of goods, like we saw in the television example, won't really change. The disadvantage is that it might cost that um, government a lot of money to maintain that exchange rate. So, for example, if in these foreign exchange markets, people are bringing their currencies and demanding other currencies, their currency values might change. In the graph on the left, for example, maybe people are trying to buy German goods. They bring their dollars into those markets, increasing the supply of dollars and making the value of the dollar fall. What the government's going to have to do in this market is enter those foreign exchange markets and start buying up their own currency, increasing the demand for their currency in order to reestablish that old exchange rate. I'll let you think about how they do that in terms of these graphs. The other kind of exchange rate system, the kind that we actually have now, is called the flexible exchange rate system, and it's pretty much what I've described to you. It's a system where the supply and demand for currencies determines the exchange rates. The advantage of that is that eventually trade should even out between nations. I'll explain that in a second. The disadvantage is a little bit less stability. You're never going to be quite sure what a dollar is worth in the future. So how do flexible exchange rates equalize trade? Well, let's say that prices are low in the United States compared to Germany. And as a result of that, Germans are going to start trying to buy goods from the United States. Well, going through what we've just went through, we can predict that the US dollar would appreciate. Those Germans would walk into their room carrying their euros. They would start demanding dollars to buy our cheaper stuff, which would make the value of the dollar start to rise. Well, if the value of the dollar starts to rise, it's going to eventually make our goods more expensive. Go back to the television example. And so what should happen over time is that prices relative to in various countries should start to even out. There's a name for this. It's called the purchasing power parity theory. And it suggests that exchange rate adjustments will eventually equate the purchasing power of various currencies. In other words, in the end, everything should wind up costing the same no matter where you buy it. Now that's a theoretical, uh, theoretical conclusion, easy for me to say. Um, but it's essentially, uh, theoretically at least, what should happen over time. All right, next time we'll talk about um, the effects of exchange rates on things that we've talked about already, like monetary and fiscal policy. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the unthinkable has happened. Some sick, twisted individual has stolen every teacher's edition in this school. What do we do? Declare a snow day! Does anyone know the multiplication table? Uh, please, please, don't panic.
They can smell fear.